We're having a beautiful day here in the Pacific Northwest, and I thought, let's just hang out together today. Let's freshen up the house and remind ourselves that we're not going to be stuck in winter forever, that brighter and warmer days are going to come. In our little cottage, that means stripping away the last of the Christmas stuff and making room for what's next. This is a fake garland that I actually invested in this year because greens dry out over the fireplace so quickly and they make a horrible mess. So these fake versions were actually a really nice investment because they look just as good now as they did at the beginning of the season. I know that a lot of homemakers don't love the task of cleaning, but I find cleaning to be incredibly therapeutic. Now, of course, there's a difference between scrubbing the toilet and mopping the floors and freshening up a space. But regardless of what kind of cleaning needs to take place, I'm always so thankful when I get the opportunity to be able to do it once we're finished with homeschooling and once the farm chores have been taken care of and everyone is fed and happy at least for a few moments i really relish in the opportunities that i get to keep my home looking beautiful i'm often asked how do you have the energy to do all this how do you have the energy to run a farm to run your businesses to keep a home and the reality is i am so incredibly motivated by beauty that it's actually really easy for me to find the energy to do little projects like this even if it's just freshening up the mantle i love that feeling when you walk into a room and you find a little pocket that your eyes are drawn to and they're beautiful. And I think part of this training actually came from working at the flower shop for a decade because we were constantly working on the storefront and making new displays and finding different ways for things to look beautiful, shifting things around so that customers would see them in a new way. You always wanted it to look kept and fresh and beautiful and I think all of those years of working retail and training just kind of now filter into my home in a different way. As much as I love to go thrifting, I actually haven't been going hardly at all, really in the last couple of years, because we have a very small house and there's only so much stuff that you can fit in it. And really now I've built a collection of some little antiques and collectibles that I like to keep around. And so most of the time when I'm freshening up a space, I really just shop my own stuff. I'm just continually shuffling and moving things around from one place to the other because when you put it in a new place it tends to catch your eye and you appreciate it like it's new but really you don't have to spend any money at all these beautiful little ceramic horses i got on a family vacation to south carolina and when we went back again a couple years later i went to the same shop and they had a few more so i scooped those up as well they tend to always live on my mantle because it's one of the safest places in my house, away from most Nerf bullets and swords <laughs> and all manner of things that will break them.
I'm actually sort of in this really neat space with my home. I think for so many years, you sort of have this idea of what you want. And if you're anything like us, maybe you're renting right now. We have rented houses for most of our life. This is our first house that we've ever owned. And so you kind of get used to doing what you can and you sort of get used to an aesthetic that you think will work with wherever you are. And that's a good thing. But frankly, I've kind of just stepped into this mindset as of late that life really is short and there's not some set aesthetic that I'm chasing for my home. There's no arrival. There's just does what's here make me happy? Do we use it? Is it joyful? Does it teach my kids something? And kind of just letting it be. And just that freedom to just say, it doesn't have to necessarily fit a certain color palette. Um, if we use it and it's beautiful and it brings us joy and it's a good contribution to our home, then it's welcome here. And that freedom has just sort of given us a lot of space to just say, it doesn't matter to me if people like it. It doesn't really even matter to me what they think when they step into my home, because ultimately we are the ones who live here. We're the ones who use the things in this space. We're the ones who read these books. We're the ones who sit in these, you know, decrepit, falling apart chairs that sit by my fireplace. These are about $50 chairs that I've had for oh over five years now. And their arms are peeling and the stuffing is coming out, but I love them. And for now, they really work for us. And so, I don't know, it's kind of liberating in a way to just say, this is my home and it gets to be what I want it to be. And that's a great privilege. I always joke on our podcast that there really is no way to truly clean your house unless you move things around and shift them every once in a while because inevitably you will find all kinds of treasures hidden underneath. Because I have four children, this is primarily pencils and pens and drawings and ribbons and sewing needles and Nerf bullets. And so especially this season, I really like to move things around, lift up carpets, shift furniture, because it gives you that, you know, opportunity that you need just a couple times a year to make sure that there's no apple cores hiding underneath your couch cushions, that there's no glasses that could get broken underneath your seat chairs. You know, it's, I don't know, it's just an extra special opportunity to sort of polish the house in a new way. This fireplace area, it may seem like I'm taking a lot of time here because I am. This is where our family lives during the winter time. We'll start a fire somewhere around 3.30 or 4 o'clock. And for the rest of the evening, this is where the whole family is planted. We only have one living room and this is it. There's no other spaces. There's no kid room. There's no toy room. There's no family room. There's nowhere else to go in our home except for this one beautiful room. And so what that means is it takes a lot of wear and tear. The furniture gets really worn, so I'm constantly moving couch cushions around and kind of trying to fluff them up. Every single day, this room needs to be tended to, and a couple times a month, it really needs to be tended to. So it's worth taking the time and kind of investing in those areas of our home or your home where your family really lives because they're going to get dirty and they're going to get messy and you're not doing something wrong as a homemaker if you can't keep them perfect. Just poke your head in every once in a while, check in on the space and make sure that it looks beautiful.
We bought our boys some wood whittling kits for Christmas, and this is their chosen space to whittle their wood, which means I'm forever sweeping and vacuuming up little shavings of wood pieces. But I love it. I love that they have something to do with their hands. It is a good skill for them. And so I just continued to vacuum it up. On these days where I'm spending a little bit more time than usual cleaning, I also like to take the opportunity to play a game that I call freeze out, which means opening up the windows and the doors on a nice day like today and getting as much fresh air into your house as possible. I am a big outside person. In fact, I really get angry when I don't spend enough time outside. So one way I like to counter that is just to bring in the fresh air and you know what? It is cold. I just turn my heater off and I fill the house with fresh, cold air. And then by the time I'm done cleaning, I can turn the heater back on and it's fine once again. But the air is so much better that way. That bookcase that you see behind me is my next big project in the house. We built that when we first moved in and now it needs to have all the books taken off and it needs to be painted to match the forest green wall color. And then we need to just sort of assess the book situation, make sure everything is stamped with uh, Stuart's little beautiful seal that he presses on the inside of the page. And it says from the library of Stuart Elliott, we just need to sort through, make sure that the books that we have are ones that we want to keep and kind of reorganize it. But that's not today. That's going to be a big project. One of the tricky parts about my winter homemaking is the amount of plants that I have inside. Uh, dare I say, it's almost a bit of a problem. And normally it's very manageable, but in the winter time, I do bring in our olive trees and all of our citrus trees from outside. And my cats, they love to use them as a litter box. And so I have to stack logs at the base of the trees so that they can't scratch into the dirt. And if any of them get moved, they will find that spot. It's terrible. But you know, the plants do require a lot of water and a lot of misting because they like to stay hydrated. And I have them here in the warmest corner of our house. This is in our living room. And once a week, I kind of just tend to them, make sure that they have what they need. Um, I won't say I'm any kind of expert at keeping houseplants or keeping citrus trees beautiful in the winter, but I'm really giving it my best effort this year. And really any effort that it takes to keep them looking nice is worth, at least for my gardener's heart, having that greenery inside in the wintertime.
You know when she's clean, she's really beautiful. I'm actually thankful a lot of the times to have such a small house because I'm able to put my hand to it and make it really beautiful with not too much effort. We have one living room. This is the dining room that you see me in now. One bathroom, a kitchen, and two bedrooms. So while we're getting ready to renovate our basement into a third master bedroom, for now, I really am thankful that I can sweep through the house in not too much time. I really do love decorating for Christmas. And it's also extremely satisfying to take it down. I really don't use anything fancy for cleaning. Most of the time I just clean with sort of a damp rag. That's what I use to dust. Every once in a while I'll use a surface cleaner with some oils in it or maybe some vinegar. But for the most part, just a little elbow grease. This green hutch that you see in the video now, that was my first furniture purchase for this house. And it was at a local thrift store and I looked at it and I looked at it and I adored it. And every week I would go back and just see if it was still there. And every week it still was. And finally, I earned enough uh, revenue through my blog um, that I saved up enough money to buy it. And I went in, it was $400. And I gave them the money and I just felt like I was the richest person in the world <laughs> because I had this money in hand and I wanted this hutch so bad. And the top comes off. So I've used it kind of as a buffet and I've used it as a hutch. This is where we keep all of our homeschool supplies. So there's actually four shelves um, on either side of the cabinet and each child has their own shelf. And then the drawers is where we keep our pencils, markers, rulers, and then some of our curriculum as well. So we call this our green thing or our homeschool cabinet. I just can't help myself with the house plants. I just, I just keep getting more. I find actually corners very difficult to decorate. And this corner had some very odd furniture in it for many years. And finally, my friend Amber just said, why don't you just put a plant there? And it was one of those eureka moments, like, why don't I just do that? And so even though the plants are kind of rotating and I put a little Christmas tree in it for the holidays, but um, long live the green thing in the corner. If, you're, if you have a corner and you're not sure what to do with it, put a plant in it. It just so happens that on the day uh, that we were filming this, my friend Beth sent me a package of flowers and moss from her farm in Oregon. One of my very favorite things to do with fresh moss is to tuck it around my house plants. It helps them to hold in their moisture. The moss will usually last for only about a week or 10 days before it dries, but it dries really beautifully. And so I always savor it when I can. It smells so beautiful when it's fresh, but even when it dries it still works as a beautiful mulch and it kind of hides the corners of your plastic containers 
So it looks really beautiful as well. A lot of the plants that we bring into our homes that you can get at, let's say, Lowe's or Home Depot are tropical plants. And so um, with exceptions, of course, most of them tend to really like a little spritz of fresh water every now and then. Now these ferns are kind of a sad story because these are my outdoor ferns and I bought them for Stu um, and I've really, really, really tried to keep them beautiful in my home, but they are making such a mess as they go through their little seasonal molting process. So I'm going to move those out to some big pots in the greenhouse where the humidity is a lot higher and I think they will be a lot happier. But, you know, I can only take stuff like this in my home for so long that looks decrepit and sad. I mean, we just, again, we don't have that much stuff in here. And so what's in here kind of needs to be something that's good. And so I'm going to replace those sad little ferns with some snake plant because they're dramatic and fun and beautiful and a lot harder for my cats to chew on. Those pots that you see there, I got those from a local thrift store and I paid $30 for the set of them. They are concrete and they are beautiful and so heavy. And I actually found the exact same pot, same dimensions and everything on Cherish, which is an antique store that you can go to online for $700. So that was one of those magic jackpot moments that keeps you going back to antique stores, just hoping you find a bargain like that. And hopefully this will be the last time that I have to vacuum up the little fern pieces. So you may notice that um, I have rugs in my dining room. The fur floors are original to this house and we have them, we had them refinished when we moved in, but they do wear, it's a soft wood. And so one way that I protect those fur floors is with beautiful old rugs. Now I have four kids and we homeschool in this room. We eat three meals a day in this room. It is very well loved. Oh, look, a snail. <laughs> That's some fresh moss. But really, the rugs are easy to clean. In fact, I think vacuuming the rugs underneath my dining room table are easier than sweeping underneath a dining room table. And so it's not that big of a deal. I vacuum it every maybe two or three days and uh, it works well for us. Just get a rug that, you know, hides some wear and tear because inevitably there's going to be pencil shavings on it and little pieces of crayon and of course some food crumbs but so long as you don't let berries get smushed into it it's not a big deal our chairs are mismatched because we sit in them and we use them and we break them our table also shows a lot of wear and tear this is a table that Stuart made for me years ago when we first moved in from some reclaimed lumber from an old silo in a little town called Waterville near here and it's so heavy and it's so beautiful, but it has shown, it has marker bits all over it and little pencil scratchings. And there's probably a few pieces of gum stuck up underneath the other side, but ultimately this is our family table and there's kind of no way around that. I love that it does show. We live here and we use this. And last but not least, this is our little bar area that we keep. We keep it stocked with dry farm wines. I'll put a link down below for those wines. They're absolutely delicious and very clean, which I'm thankful for. And then I keep a couple of different cocktail mixes and of course our flavored gin that we make every year from currants and blackberries and raspberries, my cookbook stash, some extra glasses for guests, and um, ultimately just a beautiful little area. That was a lot of work. That was a very full day. 
but a very beautiful day. So cheers, my friends. I hope you find joy in your home in whatever form that may take for you right now in this beautiful little halfway season between winter and spring.